Today I, I want to talk about uh, the kinetic chain for the smash. Please watch my intro video for the kinetic chain uh, just as a basic information because I'm going to use a lot of that uh, into this video. So if you haven't done it, do it now. Now, talking about the smash, one of the biggest problems uh, which typically occurs, uh, actually most of the biggest problems are in the kinetic chain. So when I want to talk about the kinetic chain, I will talk now about stepping on the toes, opening the hands, preloading everything about the chest muscles, but also uh, loaded and preloaded a little bit my hip. So I'm actually going to load the hip. It's very careful. It's not like squatting only. It's actually loading the hip. So I can actually feel a little bit tense from the hip. Then my left arm and both of the arms are opening together. And that will create an extra resistance from the hand here, preloading from the um, from the wrist to the elbow to the shoulder. I want to feel this connection here, so I don't over rotate, and I want to be able to use my left arm as the main driver, as we already discussed in the last video. Now, when I start shifting my body weight from my preliminary leg towards the other one, I want to start of the left arm together with the hip together, so I can have that momentum in the kinetic chain. Uh, what is a typical mistake is actually the right arm. So when I start shifting the body weight, I'm actually having a very good connection from the ground to my ankle. My knees slightly preloaded because I'm actually loading the hip as well. And the both hips are internally rotated and I start shifting, I start pulling. Just imagine that you grab something and you rotate and you pull everything. This is where the momentum comes in the hip. So I do this and I want to have a very fast, powerful momentum in my elbow. So everything what is the first part is the kinetic chain from the ground to shifting the body momentum and I can go forward. Now, of course, this is a position where the time of impact or estimated time of impact is in front of you. You can do absolutely the same going backwards in a scissor rotation or scissor jump and then this is going to look the same with the only difference that when I start and load, I still use my left arm. Of course, my left leg now is going to rotate backwards, but the main driver is still the opposite arm. So I, I'm actually moving, pulling, start this momentum and movement downwards with my opposite wrist, uh, wrist downwards and pulling the elbow towards the body and creating the momentum. Of course, when I step with the right, I'm going to rotate because scissor typically happens when the time of impact is over the head even sometimes slightly backwards. This is two different positions from how do you start the kinetic chain from down upwards. And of course from down upwards with the driver on the left arm which or the opposite arm which is actually upwards. Now preloading of the right arm. One of the typical mistakes why many players have a problem with the power of the smash is when they start the kinetic chain uh, Actually, they start well enough with the left arm and the hip, but they start too early uh, the elbow or even the wrist or even the head of the racket. And what it looks like is this. I have the starting position. I could have very good starting position. Preloading of the wrist towards the pressure point of the index finger. Elbow preloading is good enough. Both arms are opening. There's no over rotation or anything like that. And then I start rotating. In the moment when I pull, I already start the elbow and all the body. That means I just lost all my momentum or I couldn't utilize it well enough. This is why it's very important when you, when we teach your kids, you imagine that this is, especially kids, to imagine that this is a grabbing something and it's really pulling, grab and pull, grab and pull until you get this momentum. And doesn't matter that you go backwards, but you don't, you want to have the momentum of the elbow and then it comes all of the rest. Because of course, it's very important that you have high time of impact, uh, but, it doesn't matter that you have a high time of impact if you already started everything way earlier. Okay, so this is the first part of the kinetic chain. Now, when it comes to the shifting of the body weight, and it comes the second part where I use the elbow. I have the spade of the elbow, I start shifting, my body weight is actually on the left leg, doesn't matter is it going backwards or I'm able to go forward and shift in body weight. I have that movement forward and up of my, uh, of my main elbow. I haven't released anything of the preloading of the forearm and the wrist of my playing hand. This is very important because in the moment when I move forward, typical mistake is releasing, breaking, and therefore the backswing or the full control of the smash is in the backswing, of the precision of the smash in the backswing is missing. And right now, uh, I don't know how much you can see it. I hope you can see it well enough. 
this preloading is towards my index finger. Now I release the preloading and the racket drops in the middle of my palm. I have no opportunity anymore to push upwards and rotate. I only can rotate this way. Yeah, it's a rotation, but it's not optimum time of impact and it has definitely very short leverage and it will be a big problem of powerful rotation. So this is why I always say preloading towards the index finger, towards the pressure point in the index finger, the pinky has to grab very, very well, so because this is the beginning of the leverage, I have one video describing only the grip, and it's, please watch it to understand a little bit more about the pinky and the importance of the leverage. And then when you have the speed of the elbow, you have this preloading. Of course, now elbow has maximum speed. You don't want to transfer, if it's a powerful smash, you don't want to transfer for, from the forearm rotation. This will be uh, much more in the steep smashes uh, now. If you want to have a powerful smash, the speed of the elbow has to continue forward. So the elbow will continue forward, the speed of the, of the wrist and the preloading will be released, and therefore I will have the highest possible speed in the head of the racket. One thing which is about the backswing, uh, before going to the jump smash, when I have the backswing and I have very high momentum, the big precision of the backswing is actually that the racket will go from uh, when, when I start pulling the elbow downwards and upwards, the racket will go downwards and then it's going to go upwards and close and rotate everything. So let's say look, look like this and then going downwards because it's a smash. This is the backswing. But it's extraordinarily important to control where the racket stops. Typical mistakes is that the players are not able to control the backswing. And when the backswing goes outside and they want to smash, they're wondering why it doesn't go straight to the line. You have every player has to be able to control the direction where the backswing should finish according to where should it go. Because if my backswing finish here, I'll have a big problem continuing only straight because I want still to hit it hard and high over my head or in front of me according to the estimated time of impact. This is a big challenge. So please make sure backswings are corrected and then it will be much more precise. I'll make a special video only about the correction of backswing and where it does go, but not now. Now, that was just a normal smash with shifting body weight. Now we go to the jump smash because jump smash is uh, a little bit harder. When you have the starting position, of course, when you place the toes, the right leg will still be slightly open, but of course it's a squatting position. So I really want that the front leg is not fully open. So just look at the hips. It's everything about the hips, actually. Uh, sometimes very individual how much the mobility of the hips allows a correct squatting position. When you do the movement backwards, let's say I'm moving, 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 and I want to squat. I have to feel that I could squat from both legs, not preliminarily and shifting the body weight to the right, neither to the left. And that means that they will not be parallel and the right will be slightly more open. Of course, when I sh uh, squat downwards, my, I will load still a little bit more on the right or my main leg. Uh, and I will open and preload everything. So it will look like I'm here. Now I'm in a almost opening of the position. This is not my main starting position. Actually, main, my main starting position was when I start pushing upwards and I start pushing in the hip, I'm actually going to open the both arms. So the starting position is achieved in the air. So I go here, talk, then I have, then I have already, because this is the only connection with the ground, this is where I want to push the right hip and rotate already. So it looks like top, top, top. Top, top, and then rotate everything there. And go I'm not the very best to show you a perfect jump smash. I will try to publish also analysis of some of the best players in the world with slow motion cameras like Lichon Guerlain Dan and so on. And uh, uh, you will see exactly the same. You will see a perfect preloading from the both uh, from both legs, position which is relaxed and pushing shifting, opening, and preloading. And now, in the air, if, I'm, if, if I start jumping in this in the air, I will continue preloading both arms as far as I can actually shift the hip forward. And there, the left arm is even more crucial because you, you are in the air. You can't really push anything from the right hip. What uh, many players are doing is that when they put the hand, they want to push the right hip, they only push the right hip without doing anything with the left arm or the opposite arm. And in the air, that's not possible. That's why teaching the main driver to be correct, to get, of course, with the hip is very easy afterwards to make a lot of more things in the air, in the scissor jump, and with the uh, correct time of impact. 
so I'm going, I'm going, I'm squatting, then I'm opening, then I start pushing upwards, and while pushing upwards, I'll preload both elbows even more, as I will actually preload all my abs, my shoulder, so I'll feel the preloading in my forearm, in the opposite arm, the elbow is pulling, shoulder, I'll feel it in my delt, which is going down through hold the abs, and then when I pull the arm downwards, I will have to continue pushing the hip. This is what we call the second push of the hip. So when I do this and I push, I want to push one more time in the air so I can actually rotate and utilize more speed of the rotation in the air. Uh, to, 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 and rotating all the way. Now everything else about the elbow and about the wrist preloading stays more likely the same. Of course, you have in the air, very hard to control it. So many times players will continue with the elbow when they already stop the rotation. So how well they can rotate the body in the air with utilizing the main driver and the hip together, it will be absolutely vital. I hope you enjoy it and you understand it. I wait for your commands and a lot more videos coming.